welcome to the channel. Welcome to the video. Today, we're gonna go build a big fire and do a little bit of grinding here, but I think we're gonna shift gears and I'm gonna finish this up uh, without making another video about all the little processes. It's just welding the edge, grinding it back, and checking the gaps. So you can see, like we're pretty even across the top of it. I'm super tight right here. And then we get wide. So I'm just going through and welding, grinding, trying to keep it somewhat straight as I go. This side over here, I haven't welded this whole section yet. But it just takes, it takes a lot of time to get it done. So I'm gonna do a video this week of us painting the firewall on this car. Yeah, we're gonna paint it from here forward, get all this in color, cause I'm about done making a bunch of grinder mess back there. I've gotta put tail lights in this car yet. That'll be the last bit of grinding mess, but I kinda wanna have the body back on the chassis to make sure my tail light buckets are not gonna hit any of the parts of the frame. That would be a good idea, right? So, uh, yeah, not really mock up and then take back apart. We'll probably put the tail lights in it and uh, hopefully this body can stay on the frame at this point. But I do wanna paint this firewall cause it's kinda cumbersome to try to paint around the engine and everything. So. Let's get into it.
guys so here you go having fun thinking ahead trying to decide what I want to do with this space right here I think uh, I, I've thought three or four different ways to do this I was gonna bring the stripe color around and go across here and have the top half of this blue the way the outside of the car is um, I thought about doing the checkerboards across here the way uh, so many hot rodders did back in the day and then I'm like well what if instead of doing checkers what if we just did this diamond pattern across it I'm not sure that this is the size that I want to make them because basically I just took inch and a half tape and I'm kind of just getting the idea of the concept here so I run uh, four rows of tape going across this way four rows across this way and then come in and cut out you know the deal every other one and number one it's going to be a lot of work to do that whole thing not more than a hour and a half but it's going to take some time number two is like when you're cutting this you have to cut through basically two layers of tape and right on the edges of those so that makes it a little bit tougher deal because this will have to be painted a color and then we lay our tape out and then we cut it out peel it and then paint the secondary color up here and again i'm just doing this on this section across here just to add a little bit to the firewall of the vehicle rather than having a solid flat panel i think it'll be pretty cool Hey, what do you guys think? Leave, leave a comment for me there so uh, I can know what the, what the audience says. I mean, I'm doing this for you, really, not, not for me. So, yeah, let me, let me know what you think about it, um, what, what I could do. Maybe you've done something and it was way cool on a, on a firewall of an old car. I Help mean, myself. I had to go back and do some with two inch tape and I did like I'm an idiot sometimes all I need to do is uh, lay down one layer of tape and if I get the angle going I want I'll just take something that's the width I want it to be lay it down and make pencil marks on it the rest of the way that way I only have to cut through one layer of tape duh so you can see the difference in the size of those diamonds though I think for scale, I'm probably going to like the bigger ones better. Uh, maybe it's not for scale. Maybe it's because it's like going to be a lot less cutting to get this whole thing done. These aren't straight, but I'm just like playing around right now. Try
just saw, I sanded everything with a dual action sander using 320 grit, six inch DA paper, just dry, knocking it down fast, getting rid of all the orange peel and everything in it. We're gonna end up having to seal this thing no matter what I do, so I might as well get the sanding over. Now, last piece of DA paper on the roll, gets crap stuck on it about every time, so this becomes a piece of hand sanding paper. And the Velcro paper, it lasts longer. It's probably cheaper in the long run, but it costs a little bit more when you buy it. When you buy sandpaper, look at the price per sheet on it and buy it that way rather than just looking at the price on the box. These pads are super nice. This is a fine one. I cut them in half because it's like about the right size for your hand to get into the little small spots. And then, yeah, they feel like they go further because you get two out of one piece. Then the good old red Scotch-Brite pad, don't care if it's Norton or Merca or 3M, red pretty much means that you're using 320 grit, which is the finish we're going for here. We'll do 320 grit, and then we'll put one medium coat of sealer on it, maybe a wet coat, who knows, depends on how we feel. And that will fill in any deep scratches or anything that we have so that we can proceed with our base coat and get this thing done. So if this was something that was going to compete for some big show winning something, you would probably spend a lot more time block sanding than what I did on this firewall. I'm really not worried about it. I just want to have good scratches in it so everything sticks good. And then I'm going to take these pads and I'm going to scuff every little nook and cranny on here to make sure that our paint sticks in all the corners and stuff. And I like the foam pad. Like I said, you can see how much primer that's cutting off there. Scotch-Brite pad, it, it will put scratches in, but it doesn't take any kind of texture out or anything. These actually have a little grit, so they'll take a, a little bit of the texture out of there for you. They put a nice scratch in, so paint sticks good. I have a lot of confidence in it. When you have a lot of confidence in the products you use, yeah, maybe it'll help you do a better job. I don't know. Some people say they can do great work with crappy products, but I think you gotta have some quality in there somewhere. And bam, it's magically all edge sanded. Everything's good to go. Whoa, hit it with the wax and grease remover and clean it up. What do you guys use to wipe down before you paint? Anything? Water? Lager thinner? Moonshine? What is it? I know what I'm using. It's just a little solution made by PPG called SX330. Yes, it works good. Seen a lot of different stuff used. I'm just assuming that since my paint maker made this, it's probably made to work with my paint. What do you think? All right. That's right. Omni MP170. Cheaper line of PPG. Still epoxy. Uses the 175 hardener. Two parts epoxy, one part hardener. And I use uh, about 10% of acetone in it to... Reduce it down uh, if I'm using it as a sealer like this. We're just trying to fill those 320 grit scratches. That's all we need to do. Get a coating on, fill the 320 scratches, and uh, not build up a bunch of orange peel. If we just mix it two to one, it's pretty thick and it leaves orange peel. I like to use that method for underneath high build primer because it gets a nice thicker coating there to protect our metal from corrosion. That firewall's already got all that. We're just using this because it's kind of a dual use product. Put it under primer or I guess over the top of bare metal. You can do body work on top of it. You can put high build primer on top of it. Or like we're doing here, we're going to do the two to one, add reducer. We're going to spray it and use it as a sealer. Our base coat will stick directly to it. So we're gonna use some Speed Grip Control Flow Epoxy Seam Sealer here. I've already opened the cartridge and purged it out so that uh, we know we're getting equal amounts out of both sides of this. 
I've taped off my seam around my firewall. Bring you guys in a little closer to check that out. It's all taped off. That way we can be somewhat neat about it. I'm gonna gun some of this in my trash can. Again, it may, it may seem wasteful to, to shoot some of this out, but uh, we want to make sure we got a good mix here on it. We don't want any soft cure on our seam sealer. So basically, I'm going to go around, and I'm going to shoot a bead in there, and then I'm just going to push it in with my old fingers and a glove. This is a control flow variety, so it's going to try to run all over the place. We're just gonna work fast. It's hot outside. This stuff sets it sets up in three to five minutes. So I figure that's at 70 degrees and we're working at 85. So it should be good, right? I'm gonna double it up. Oof, I wish we had smell vision. This stuff smells like a three day old dead skunk. Stinky. So I just come in and push that stuff right up into all those cracks. I did make a mistake. I'm sure you caught it there in the middle. I didn't tape off enough. So that's gonna cause us a little issue. I push it in there real hard. Try to get all the excess off on my tape. How much of this are y'all even paying attention to? Are you even seeing what I'm doing? Come on, guys, get with it in here and push this stuff in tight right on down the way man it stinks it must be good if it stinks that bad right all right I go back over it and just push it in there both directions make sure we're pretty smooth and then the magic happens when you pull all this tape off and you don't have all this huge mess that you have to clean up. <sighs> yeah. You make me sneeze. All right, so here we go. Come on, come on, come on. Let's get ready to come off and make a big old mess. Of course. There we go. So, a tip for taping go all start on one end go all the way to the other end overlapping your tape the same way the whole time and then it comes off much easier you're not picking and digging a hundred times trying to get your tape off I think I'm going the wrong direction here but my tape seems like it's sticking pretty good so you can see what a small little fine bit of seam sealer we have there wasn't that nice clearing off that giant hunk of ugly and then I'm gonna wipe that off and I am going to try I said try to be careful you ever try to be careful and just like whoop, one time right around that and it is under the hood but I still want it to look decent. Oh yeah, we're cutting down on our tape line that we got there. Yeah, that's not bad. That is not bad at all. Then I'll use a different finger. Get that top line smoothed out a little bit. Oh yeah, beautiful.
All right, uh-huh, folks, you can tell just what it looked like now. It's all laid down, flashed off. We are good to go, so let's go make us a little bit of that there white base coat and put on this thing, make it the color that we need to make it so that we can get it done. All right, so we let her flash off for about 30. Now we're going to come back in. We got the white paint loaded in the gun. We're going to get her all covered up with some white tonight so it can dry, baby. All right, so we got this thing all based white. I put three coats of it on there, so uh, it's good and covered. Now we're going to get two coats of clear on it. I am going to set the camera back a little bit because, uh, yeah, this is uh, making a ton of overspray. But we got her done. We did bring old Shaky Pudding in here to do a little bit of spraying for us tonight. Hope you guys enjoyed that. We're going All right, hope you guys are doing good. It's another evening here in the old hog barn, and we got a uh, clear put on this last night, and she is reasonably shiny looking. It's kind of hard to tell with white. I always hate video and white cars. They're just hard to see what's going on. Something that uh, I did notice that happened to us, like. Can you see him? Can you see him? Almost, yeah. A bug. Summertime, painting outside after dark. You get bugs. Luckily, uh, only place there's any bugs are in the base of this, so the top part and everything. I don't know how we managed to do it, but there's no bugs in there. It is going to need to be sanded and buffed, but hey, that's just part of it. We're going to go back and sand the front of this where we're going to do our layout of stuff. We're going to hit that with a little bit of 800 grit, and uh, I'll bring you guys back in when I get it sanded up and kind of figure out what our next little step is here. All right. I didn't uh, like show the details of doing this because it was a major time sucking pig but i have it now all taped up i gotta touch down a few edges and we're gonna spray it black It's important whenever you're doing tape outs not to uh, not to spray your base super wet because it soaks around all the edges and then you end up with really fuzzy tape lines and when you spend way too much taping you get a little sloppy these aren't perfectly straight but it's like on the firewall under the hood I 
I don't think anybody's going to look at it that hard. so it is the next day and everything's nice and dry you can see maybe maybe not I mean it's like uh, one of those things that you look at and it makes you start seeing circles or squares or checkerboards or something we do have a few mascots that got in there after I shut the door last night because yep it's summertime or springtime whatever it's bug time that's what it is so Got a few bugs in there, but it's all painted up. The firewall's good. The cow's good. So now uh, the next step is going to be moving the car out, getting it mounted back on the frame, and and special special thing. I have received a box. So we have the. The Speedway box with all of the goods in it here. Got LED tail lights, and to make it go faster, I just went ahead and bought their Frenching buckets. Um, they have this big lip on them and everything. When I build them, I do them a little different, but hey, these are already done. We don't have to do that part of the fab, and we'd be able to just put them in there. We're not going to sink them in that deep but it's nice to already have all that stuff done so that we can get them mounted up. They'll be going down in the very bottom of our tail panel there. Like I said I, earlier in the video, I kind of want to have that on the uh, frame. So I make sure these are in a good spot on there. I picked the best location for them. And other than that, guys, we're still working. I've welded the perimeter of this door all the way around. It's not pretty, but it's welded and it's gonna hold itself together. So I'm working in the background trying to finish all that. We still gotta build this little top section of it to be completely done with the fab work on it. Yeah, so those things are coming. We're gonna get body work done on this door, on that door opening and reprime the middle of the roof kind of out on the edges the body then all the work is done and we get this door ready to go on there we will be able to focus on wiring dash getting it running and driving finally need to put some seats in it thinking about building some secret storage compartments in here since it is an old uh prohibition era kind of a ride we probably need some tommy guns and maybe some uh, spots to stash some jars in there so hey i appreciate you guys watching you like the video give it a thumbs up doesn't cost anything to hit that uh, subscribe button i appreciate everybody sticking around if you've made it this far you've definitely sat through some stuff so Thank you, and we will catch you all on the next video. All right, guys, I don't know if you can hear what I'm saying or not, because it's raining like crazy. And even though my shop's insulated, it is super loud. I just wanted to give you a little update here. I'm working my way around, building this uh, around for the back glass on the top of the door. You can kind of see I've got from here to here. I'm going to have to notch this, taper this down. Kind of, this was the only area I'm kind of worried about it looking weird is uh, I'm going to have to figure out how to build this, have a door panel that's up to here, and then everything from here up is going to be painted. I just have my piece of wood in here instead of glass. I got the garnish molding set in there. 
I figure all this stuff's gonna have to have some kind of felt or something foam around it to help seal it up and just take up any kind of slack around there. It, like you can see what I've had to do here is like multi-panel fabrication and then a fold in it, get it here. Not the best gaps in the world, but hey, it's coming together.